Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Good morning. Hello, everyone. Uh, how are you? It's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue and my little barky dogs. Apologies if you don't like to hear barky dogs, but they were part of my family. So that's, um, and I work from my home. So that's what that's all about. Um, how are you all this morning? It's Wednesday. It's the middle of the week. Tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. And so I wanted to show you a project that I've been working on for some time um, that I have turned into a wall hanging and also a card. Um, so it, depending on what you want to, you know, what you're wanting to do, you can either make it a wall hanging or a card and it's still a gorgeous um, project. So it basically what it is, is um, a prayer that I found in um, on the internet. It's an Irish blessing and um, it's, it's a beautiful blessing. So I really loved it. And first I tried to do it in vinyl and I was like, this is way too hard because I chose this traditional Celtic kind of uh, font there. And it was just a lot of weeding. So then I started, then I went to um, iron on, which is much better than uh, vinyl. So I did have some luck with that, but then I just decided, you know, I think it would look best if it were, especially for the framed one, if it were print then cut. So I'm going to take you through this whole process. Um, all of the images and the text and uh, so the cross and everything. And I made also this for the card. This is all from Design Space. If you are a Design Space Access subscriber, so just kind of for anybody that's new out there, um, they might think, oh, this might cost me money. Only uh, the images you can use as long as you're a subscriber. Um, and that's what's great about Access is that there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of images that you can use. And these I pulled from Design Space. So I want to just say um, good morning to everyone. And um, also uh, let you know that I do have some announcements. I'm saving them till the middle of the show because I want to get it going. But before I do, I want to say hi to my friends. I see Brittany and uh, Carrie, Gloria and Leslie, Penny, Yvonne. Hi, Yvonne, you're up early. Um, and welcome. So glad to have you. Um, it is St. Patrick's Day tomorrow, and if you are looking for something that's not quite as religious for to do for St. Patrick's Day, I did want to show you this kind of a bonus, um, a bonus thing. This is a, I don't know if you can see it properly, there's a lot of reflection here, but this is one of those um, cut a bunch of layers, and this is free. Um, you have to go to my SVG, my 3dsvg.com, my 3dsvg.com. This one is free this month and also the one for the Ukraine, which we're going to be doing on Friday. So um, if you want to do something a little more, you know, fun, this is an alternative that you can do. I cut this in eight by eight. And the thing I really liked about it, I didn't even use any foam spacers. Um, I just put it all together, no glue, and just put it into this uh, shadow box, which is what I'm going to also be using for the one on Friday. So these have been uh, selling on, I buy these at Michael's. Usually can, it's like buy one get one is the best deal but um i think right now they're buy one get 50 percent off the next one um which i think is kind of mm, whatever but um you can buy them in three packs so you get six of them for the cost of oh i don't know one i don't know i think there's three for thirty dollars or something like that oh what are you eating stop it what do you got oh Hold on a second. Give me that. Give it. 
What do you got? Nope. All right, I'm sorry. My dogs had my action wobbles, and we know how expensive those action wobbles are. Anyway, um, the other thing that I wanted to show you that I've been working on is this Ukrainian card. I saw a way to support uh, the people of Ukraine by um, by sending them money. I, saw, I thought it was like an awesome idea. You know, there are people that were like doing bed and breakfast or whatever that is, Verbo. I, of course, don't have a lot of money to spend on Verbo. So instead, what I decided to do was purchase this artwork. It was only $4. And um, it's a beautiful artwork. I'm going to play around with it a little bit more. And then I put it on the um, outside the front of this um, sunflower card that's in DS. So I'm going to show you this next week. I just wanted to let you know that you can support Ukrainians, um, especially ones living in Ukraine, um, by supporting them through Etsy and purchasing something that they don't have to deliver. So this is artwork. They don't have to deliver that. So there you go. Um, all right. So let's get started on this. So this is just an idea that I had when I was a kid. Now I grew up in a very Catholic home. Um, I'm not Irish, but we had a lot of Irish friends. And in in our Catholic home, there are always crosses. Um, and I looked around and I'm like, you know, I, there, there were crosses in like every single room of my my home. Um, including bedrooms and everything. And we also had statues and they were blessed and things like that. It was very, very, my, my grandmother was very devout Catholic, um, Italian, but uh, Catholic. So anyway, I, there were always these like wall hangings that they put together and I haven't seen them around, so I decided to recreate one for myself because I, I feel like I need it. The only like blessing that I have is in my kitchen, which I really love, but um, I didn't make myself. So, um, so I figured I would do that. So I did do a little search around the internet looking for a proper blessing. I really liked this one because um, I thought... <coughs> it's encompassing. It's not something that you um, would normally see. And it's kind of like non-denominational. So um, plus it's got that Irish twist to it. So what I did was I went around on Google and I found something that I liked. I don't know if I'm going to be able to open up Google, but I, but I found something that I really liked there. And I started... I don't know what that dog is doing. Hey, what are you doing over there? Hey, hey, come over here. What are you doing? Are you going to, is he getting in trouble? Stop that. Okay, sorry. They're like little kids. Um, so I just went and you could do the same thing. I just went to Irish. Uh, I went to like my uh, browser and I typed in Irish blessing. And, um, oh my goodness, they're crazy today. I'm sorry, Irish blessing. So I looked around at all of these lovely images. I did like this one, may your troubles be less. Um, but I found one that I just really liked and that's this one. So when you find something on the internet, um, if you, um, if you see it, you know, you can take the entire text if it is in text and bring it into design space. So for instance, if you like this one that's very popular, May the Road Rise Up to Meet You, you can actually um, go here if it's going to let me do it and select the text um, and bring it into design space. So let's see if I can do it here don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. So let me first save this and we'll start from scratch. All right. So is this saved? Oh yeah. My, my computer's so slow. Okay. All right. And so let's start new. <coughs> All 
Okay. Come on now. Slow, slow, slow. Like slow as molasses on a, on a winter day. Come on now. Maybe I'm rushing it. Okay. I don't know what's going on. But if I wanted to say, um, take a big chunk of, no, take a big chunk of text. They're actually closing the door now. I, I, I've got like leprechauns living in my house with me. You guys. All right. Let's start from new. So um, when somebody brought this up last night and I want to make sure if, if you, you're just now doing text again and you haven't done it in a while, they have made a change. Um, and so all you need to do is type or click on that T and you will get a text box that says text. And um, you no longer have the two separate boxes. So you just go up here to the text and to start typing or you can also cut and paste. Um, so this is what I did. I did this Irish blessing, God's might. I'm just going to do a few. Okay. Um, God's wisdom to guide you. Okay. So now that we have that, we need to think about, um, I, I can't believe these dogs. I, I'm like, you guys, hold on. What are you doing? What are you, do not do that. You're a bad boy. Oh my God. What are you doing? I need these things. Ugh. Oh my goodness. I so apologize. They are like eating all kinds of things that I need for tomorrow's lesson. Okay. Sorry. So, um, once you have the text in your box, then you can start making changes to the size, um, and what, and, and the font and everything. So what I did here, if you notice it, it's, uh, the largest part of the font is here. And then it goes a little smaller and then a little smaller. So uh, first, let's talk about the color. We can change the color here just simply by going up to operation and choosing a uh, color. I think a nice green would be nice. And then also we can go up here to font and um, you can you can search for them. There are a couple, but the one that I used was... Um, I'm going to mispronounce it. It's unseal or un. The C might be hard. It's American unseal calm regular. This is what I used. But see, there's also this one, and these are Cricut um, fonts. So there it goes. There is the, um, the text. I'm going to change it back to that green. So, um, in an effort to get this entire, uh, and it's pretty big to this entire blessing on there, what I decided to do was, um, first I centered it, then I, I did advanced and I ungrouped to lines. Okay. So I left this as sort of the marker and then I'm going to make the God's might a little bit smaller like this and then the to uphold you i'm going to make even smaller like this now don't worry about the end result just yet but i want you to see like how um how you would do this where the the text is different size and um it's really simple once you get the you know once you get the hang of it um so here we go i have Irish blessing, God's might to uphold you. And then a little space here, God's wisdom, which I want to make smaller, like here, maybe like this. And then to guide you, I make it much smaller like this. 
All right. And you see, I've, I've got spaces between there. Now I would just go on and just type in this whole thing. And then once I have it the way exact way that I want it, then I would select the whole thing and hit weld. Okay. Um, so whoop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And hit weld. I'm having quite a day today, man. All right, so here we go. So let's say we have the entire blessing up here and um, we want to create this wall hanging. You could do just the blessing, but I thought, you know, I, I wanted to have a cross as I mentioned. So um, I went looking for crosses and I just did an image search and I typed cross. It looks very much like, um, uh, very much like the Anna Griffin cross, but I didn't use that. I actually used a cross from Design Space, but I wanted sort of like one that looked kind of Celtic. This one is looks kind of Celtic. Um, and there, there are others, obviously the one I chose, um, I don't know if I typed in Celtic. I've been, it's been a while since I actually created this, but, uh, let's have a look. No, I think I might have typed in Celtic, but oops. Um, Celtic cross. Yeah, I did. So you can see, you don't have to choose the one I chose, but you could choose one of these Celtic ones. And um, let's choose this one because it's really nifty looking. Uh, and what I decided to do on this was I um, actually had to put the background on this one, but uh, I'm gonna ungroup it and change the colors. I, I think I can do that. Nope, it's one layer. So I am going to actually uh, get rid of these things here. And hopefully I can get rid of all of these little pieces like this just like this. And actually I can just go on the right hand bar. This is called contouring. And that's what I'm doing is I'm contouring out um, all of the inside pieces of this. And I just realized that I probably should have duplicated this image first. And so I'll just have to go back and, and grab it. All right. So a lot of contour on this. I should probably just do hide all contour. Yay, and that's what I did. Um, okay, so hiding all contours gives us basically the back layer of the cross, which I'm going to also make in green. I'll change it to this green over here. And then I'm gonna go back and grab that same cross, if I remember which one it was, this one, I'll save it. Um, and grab that again. And this time I think I will, um, I will size it just like this, but I'm going to take away the, um, the, the circle around it. Cause I don't know. I just don't, I don't care for it. So I'm going to contour that out. So here we go. And what I'd like to do is turn this gold. Okay. So now I have a cross that is going to have a background of green, which is going to look really pretty with gold. Or if you wanted to, you could also do an offset layer. If you didn't want to do it this way, you could also go up here and do an offset layer a quarter of an inch off offset layer would look nice. And again, change it to that green. It's up to you what you want to do. And I'm going to try to give you this. Uh, why is my computer so slow? Oh, goodness gracious. It's certainly taking a long time. Ugh. Anyway, so here 
we have kind of all the pieces that are part of the um, the the wall hanging. So um, what we need to do then is to start figuring out. I'm just going to get rid of this because I'm not too happy with my computer right now. Okay, we have to start figuring out how to lay this out. So for me, I was thinking, all right, I'll have the cross, it will be about the same size as the blessing. And again, I'm going to do the print then cut. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to unlock this and I want to sort of shrink it like this. And again, the other one that I did has much more text on it. And um, once I did this, I'm going to actually put a square behind it. So I get a shape and I'm going to get a square shape and I'm going to put a shape behind it. The reason why I'm doing that is I'm going to turn it into, are you kidding me? No results found. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm going to turn it into a print then cut. If you print then cut, if you flatten uh, just text, then you'll run into a problem where the, um, the cutting part will cut out all of the individual layers. You don't want that. You want for it to be um, on a square or some kind of a shape, you see? So there is our text and I'm going to now select, I have it all nice in the middle of my square. I'm going to select both the square and the text and I'm going to come over here right here. And it's called flatten. When I flatten, it looks a little different because it's changing it from one uh, layer to, I'm sorry, from two layers to and making it into one layer. Or so if it's multiple layers, it would change multiple layers into one layer that can then be printed. Okay. So while I'm here, I also want to do an offset layer because I think that would look nice. I'm going to choose that squared off offset and I'm going to apply. But one thing that you want to do here is that this is actually a print then cut. So I'm going to go over here and change it to a regular cut. And I think we will do some, I'll do some, uh, I'm actually doing some pretty rose colored uh, background. So I'm getting kind of close to what I want it to look like. I'm going to change the size of, make sure I center that. I'm going to group it. And then I'm going to change the size of the um, cross to be about the same size as this. Now, I'm not thinking about size just yet because um, we can deal with that. I'm just looking for what looks good visually. Okay. So now I'm thinking it probably needs some sort of a mat behind both the cross and the uh, blessing. So again, now I'm going to go and get myself another shape, another square, and I'm going to arrange it to the back. Let's change that to, I actually chose a pink color. Um, I'll show you in my mat, but I'm going to then make it the size that I really want to see it at. Then I can start thinking about how is this going to fit into my frame or how am I going to make this into a card? Okay. So now I've got what I think is a really good setup and you have to think of balance balance and you know left has to be sort of the same as the right as far as balance goes um, and I think that this is very nicely balanced so I'm going to actually group it and then I'm going to start thinking about how am I going to put this on a card so first let's make the card um, we're going to go over here again to shapes and we will um, unlock it. Let's turn it white. Most card bases are white. And we are going to make it, let's see, we're going to make it 7 inches wide and 10 inches high. And the reason why we're doing that is because we also want to go and get our, um, our score line right here. So we're going to grab a score line. 
and bring it down here, turn it like this. And the only thing we're concerned about here is that it's the right width, um, not so much the placement. So we want the score to be the whole width of the card right here, okay? And it's a little crooked, <laughs> so you do have to worry about that. All right, let's see if that's going to work. All right. So once you have those two elements on there, it still looks a little tiny bit crooked to me. Um, what do you think? I think it looks good now. Okay, so we're going to select both of them and we're going to do a range. I'm sorry, a line center that's going to put my um my score line right in the center and then i'm going to select them all and choose attach so now i have to take this and put it make it the same size as my card so i can use the card as a visual if i'm not going to make the card i'm going to make a wall hanging you do the same thing except you don't have a um a score line. So we're going to do both. So let's go ahead and grab another shape. And um, I happen to get at Michael's this frame. It's an 11 by 14 inch frame. I want to show it to you. It's 11. I got two for one price. And so I got two of them, one for my to show you um, how to put it together. So it's 11 by 14, but you notice here that there is a mat here and it makes it eight by 10. I think the mat's a little much. So I'm gonna show you how I took the mat out, but still put this together and it has actually a mat fit, um, in the background. So what we need to do is change this to 11 by 14, okay? Now, oops, 11 by 17. This could be cut on your Cricut if, I'm actually gonna turn it this way, 14 by 11, um, if you wanted to. But I felt like it was just a square, so I cut it from 12 by 24 inch paper and it worked out just fine. So, um, so there is that. And we will just turn it, I kind of like hoping for something like a tan color. And at this point, we can, then take our design and arrange it to the front and start playing around with how is it going to look. So this to me looks kind of a little bit, um, if I do it this way, it kind of looks a little too, and again, I should have more text there, but it kind of looks a little bit like stretched. So I kind of don't want to do that, but I want to fit this 11 by 14 inch frame. So what I can do is I can ungroup the background and turn this background into my mat layer. You see, and this can also be achieved if you want to using our, um, our offset, except you're gonna do like a reverse offset. So what is that, an inset? I think it's an inset. So you can do um, minus zero, wait, zero point, yeah, minus 0 0.25. Let's do that. And we'll do the square corners and hit apply, which it's, it's not quite what I'm looking for. Um, maybe I need to go and change that to, let's do this again. All right, here's the offset. I'm going to go offset. And instead of minus 0 0.2, I think I'm going to go minus 0 0.5. 0 0.5 even. Okay, Oop, almost. And apply. Okay. So this is our background. And we can go ahead and change it to that color. Okay, just like that. Um, and you see, it's about that same size, so we don't actually need it anymore. All right, now, now we can start playing with, if we wanted to add more 
um, more, well, we actually can't, we'd, ha we'd have to add all the text before we did the flatten, um, but you can actually back out of that or just start over. And then you can start playing with these elements and deciding, okay, um, which do I want to stretch, you know, and how much do I want to stretch it kind of thing. All right. Now, in terms of um, the card, the card's so much easier to gauge this because you have a very finite um, size here. And here we go. So um, in terms of the card, we will take and we will take this, which is our background, and change it to a five by seven. Actually, I think it's seven by five. Seven by five. Is it unlocked or is it locked? Seven by five. Okay. So here is five by seven. It's getting closer. And um, we are going to make it actually like about a quarter of an inch smaller than that. You see? I don't know if I'm explaining this very well. This is how my brain works. So I apologize if it's a little much for you. But then I started doing um, things like this, trying to figure out what is good for, for a card size. So I started just changing the elements, making sure that they weren't like looking stretched or too big and um, and did this. Then if you wanted to add a text to the inside of the card, you could certainly do that um, by going here and just typing text. Now with this, I thought um, because of the blessing itself, I decided to put in there, give God your weaknesses and he'll give you his strength. But I wanted it to write in with a pen. So um, I'm going to type out that, that sentiment. So give God your weaknesses and he'll give you his strength. Now, obviously, my strength to Okay, obviously we don't want this big um, look. So let's go ahead and center this and we'll go over here and look at fonts. And the way that we find writing fonts is we can do filter. So we can choose writing, okay? And once you do that, you can find a font that you like that looks like it matches to your font on the front side, but it will be in, uh, text. So this one here is called DTC Cottage Style. It's a writing font. And let's see what it looks like. Mm, it's a little messy. So let's just do that again. I want to make sure my filter is on still. Okay. That one looked a little bit messy. So let's choose this one. This one's called Lemonade Script. Yeah, I like this one better. So I'm going to um, bring this down here, make it appropriately sized for my card. And I'm going to put it where I want it to be. Let me move these things. And then I'm going to select them both and hit attach. Okay. Now, as far as cutting this out, this is a print and cut. And um, this here, what I chose to do was I chose to um, make the cross in a beautiful gold matte finish that I used last week on my uh, Lucky Clover card. So you can use whatever you want, obviously, but um, I'm going to bring you down so you can see how I put this together. I hope that this is useful. Um, all right. So let's see what we got here. So we have, this is for the, for the sign. So, ah, okay, here we go. Move that out of the way. So this is for the sign. So maybe we should do the sign last. And this is the card itself. So let's put this over here. 
So here's my card base, what we just did. You see, I got this one dirty. And it's got um, it's got a score line here. I'm just going to fold it at the score line. And then I'm going to just put together the front of the card. So I cut this out. This is Anna Griffin paper that I got ages ago. Um, I don't know. Uh, there might be some Anna paper that looks like that because she loves roses. So um, there that and this paper is actually from a card pack called emerald isle or emeralds yeah i think it's called emerald eye and then here is our cross and the um the back of the cross so let's go ahead this was cut from it's called let me check it's cricket smart vinyl it's champagne which i really like so champagne matte i'm gonna have to get some more of that because i really like it it's not like a really brass brassy looking gold and um, i think it looks very elegant i think it looked really good on anna anna cards um which we're going to be doing some more of those soon all right so while i'm doing this i don't need to tell you what i'm doing i'm just um I am just weeding. So while I'm doing this, I guess I'll tell you my announcements. First of all, um, we are giving away, as we usually do, but we're giving away um, so much more this month than we have been able to in the past month. And that's because I am trying to reach a goal on my youtube subscribers i am like so so close and i want to thank everyone for all the sharing that you do um and so this is how i thank you all is um i give away things cricket things so this month we're giving away a cricket the brand new cricket bright 360 table lamp that has a retail value of two hundred dollars i'm also giving away an easy press mini bundle that includes a ton of stuff lots of iron on um and lots of i think there's a the the easy press mat which i love though and um, that is worth like $278. I'm giving that away. I'm also giving away an everything bundle, which is also worth $278. And, um, and then I'm giving away two essentials bundles, which is like kind of like a, a mixture of all different stuff includes, it's kind of like almost like a mystery box. Like, um, so it has all kinds of things in there. It's just called an essentials bundle because it's everything you need, essentials. Um, and there's going to be five winners. So there's two essential bundles. There's two, um, sorry, there's two essential bundles, one of the um, lamp and one of the everything and one of that mini press. This month we're doing it a little bit differently because we are going to um, wait and not assign prizes until the very last or the second to last day. We're going to have um, the, the giveaways going to end on the 30th. So all you need to do for this, you don't have to pay or do anything crazy. Um, all you need to do is to click on the link in the description and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Once you have subscribed, you can come back every day and put your name in. And once you put your name in, we'll have at the end, we'll have, I'll have the raffle copter thing do the picking and we will have a nice great big party at the end because i am i'm thinking i'm gonna hit the twenty thousand, hopefully by the end of this month but if not it will be close enough and we can at least party so we'll have a special episode of um the cricket chat on the 31st i'm going to trim this up because i don't like all this stuff um on the 31st so you'll have to come and find out if you won. I'm also giving away a sunflower yellow. Yes, another one. Sunflower yellow cricket cutie. Um, and that I gave one away last week to Donna Marie. And that's headed your way, Donna. 
Um, and whoops, this little piece, I think it's supposed to be on there. Come on. That's headed your way, but I have another one and I thought, let's give it away um, too, because I don't know, because I just feel like it. And I love the color, the, the sunflower color. So let's do that. All right. So um, here's what I'm doing. And that's, that's a separate giveaway. So just so you can see that. So um, I'm putting my vinyl on the offset layer. And I think it looks really cool that way. Just like this. See how nice that goes on paper. And then I'm going to take these bits and I'm going to take some uh, tape. This is double sided tape. You can get it anywhere, including the Dollar Tree store. I like it. Um, I like it better than glue when you're dealing with these really large sort of square pieces. Um, but you can use glue too, if you want. Okay. So, um, for the, the giveaway for this sunflower, um, cutie, we are giving away that next week. I think it ends on the 24th. So these are two separate giveaways. So you have to um, go ahead and put your name in for two separate giveaways. So if you want to win just the cutie, you can enter that way. Um, and it's all about getting those YouTube subscribers, which we are getting. It's so exciting. It's so exciting to watch. And I have to thank you all for um, making that happen because three years ago it came up on my memories. Three years ago, I was excited to hit 100. Can you believe it? That was just three years ago. And with all the pandemic and everything, a lot of people had trouble getting their, you know, keeping their life on track, but not me, I guess. <laughs> so, um, so I'm really thankful to all of you uh, for that, for making that happen. There's no like monetary gain. Well, I mean, there is, but it's, that's not what I'm in it for. I'm in it for just because I like to be a little competitive with myself. Um, and so there's that. Uh, as far as what's coming up this Saturday, we also have our regular Zoom call. Anybody can participate in this call. Um, we will post, I will post the link. And what we'll do just like last time is we will also stream it on uh, YouTube. Okay. Not on Facebook on YouTube. I, I can only stream at one place. So YouTube is a little more universal. So, uh, we'll stream it on YouTube, but if you want to be part of that call, um, you, all you have to do is dial in and listen, I got to tell you, um, don't be like shy. Don't say, ah, oh, you know, I don't look right. My hair needs to be colored or I don't feel great or whatever. Just come as you are and bring your favorite adult beverage and sit and chat with all of us. Um, there's usually like 30 or 40 people on the call. It's so exciting. People from all over the place. We usually have Kathy from Idaho and Dawn and Bren from Canada. And who else do we have? Nancy sometimes, uh, Kirsten. There's a lot of people that come all the time. And they're just, Aladra, she's from uh, Louisiana. Kirsten's from Rhode Island. There's me from Massachusetts. It's kind of fun. And we talk about, you know, just different things we've been working on. And uh, it, it's, it's a great time. You know, even after the pandemic, getting your life back after the pandemic is a struggle. I mean, I totally get it because having also had cancer during the pandemic, I, um, it was like my whole life got turned upside down. And the only thing that helped me anchor myself was my friends. And that includes you guys. And, uh, so, you know, just friends that would check in on me or friends that could just kind of say, Hey, how you doing? You know, that sort of thing. And, um, and it's just so important to have friends. Um, and it's hard to make friends as you're an adult. 
isn't it? Like, you know, when you are, um, when you are a kid, it's easy to make a friend, you know, you're at the playground. Hey, want to play with me? You know, that sort of thing, but it gets harder as you get older and, but you need them more, I think when you're older. So for me, I just, love having so many friends and um, knowing I can just kind of touch base with them and just say hi and see how they're doing, how I'm doing. It's really, it's a nice rock to lean on. Okay. So there's our card that I put together. I might've made this a little bit crooked, but it's a beautiful card, I think. And especially for somebody who might be um, struggling with something. So Give God your weaknesses and he'll give you his strength. I think that's really beautiful. Now, as far as the um, wall hanging is concerned, let's talk about that. Uh, we're going to take off the plastic and then we're going to turn it around. You think so, Dawn? So Dawn's saying she doesn't think it should be streamed on YouTube. I will do whatever you like. If, but the thing is, there are some people that don't want to be on video. And so I want, but they want to be part of the, part of the uh, fun. And it is fun, isn't it? Um, so I, I was thinking that that's what I was thinking. So I'm going to take this, I'm opening it up on the back like this, these little prongy things. And I do use some a tool to get them because they're they're metal, all right. And then when I take it out, so this is the backing, and then here is just the paper. Um, yeah, here's the paper. We can get rid of that, and here is the mat. Now, to be frank, I think this mat is just way too thick. It's like two and a half. Oh, no, it's two inches. I, I didn't think it was, um, it was, I thought it was too thick and it didn't give much room for my, um, for my design. So here is what I ended up doing. I cut a piece of 12 by 24 inch paper and I know I'm putting this in wrong, but I just want to just show you. And then I took another piece of 12 by 24 inch paper and I, I used my ruler and my true control knife, and then I cut uh, an inch around like this, okay? And then I did the exact same thing here. So let's go ahead and move this out of the way, and we'll just put this together so you can see it. All right, so where's my, there it is. So this is the cross that I used. I wish I knew the the um, the number, the image number. I can probably give it to you, but I, I think I'm going to be able to give you this file, so you don't have to recreate it. But I wanted you to understand how I did it because um, it's important to come up with, you know, your own creative ideas and and see them through. It feels really good too um to like have an idea in your head and then put it on paper i think that makes us artists you know um and i remember going to college and and they you know i loved folk art when i was younger folk art was was something i really loved i mean i enjoyed all the you know i i, I live near boston so you know the mfa is where i learned about monet and and all of the pointillism and all of the classics monet was actually a favorite of mine but i just really liked folk art because I felt like it was of the people. You didn't have to be a classically trained artist. And I remember my art teacher saying, no, no, no. Folk art is not art. And I thought, wow. And that stuck in my head for a good long time. And then I started thinking, you know, yeah, okay. You don't want to call it art. Then you can call it craft. You can call it artisan if that makes you happy but i think he was just feeling like 
you know, that he had trained and been a teacher for a long time and maybe he had a master's or a PhD or something. I didn't want to insult him or anything. I wasn't trying to insult all of those wonderful art teachers. Um, but I just feel like anybody can create art. I mean, it might, it might not, it might not be the kind of thing that can hang in a museum, but it's still art and it's an expression of our creativity and of our, just our soul, our personality. It's important to, was there one of the artists that said, um, yes, you need food and you need water and, you know, clothes and everything, but you also need art. And so that's, that's my outlook. That's how I'm going to do it. Oops, I put it on a little bit off center. All right. It's not that you don't want to be seen. I, you still love, yeah, you do. And I, I love it. I just, just beautiful. And, you know, I was thinking about, uh, oh, of course, Ukraine. All I do is think about that. And I was thinking, remember last year we did our Ukrainian uh, pisinka, the, um, the Easter eggs. And I was thinking, you know, maybe I should do do those again. I still have the dye and everything. So uh, maybe I should do those again closer to Easter. But I think that what I really loved about the pissing kit was um, it was done when there was no work that you could do on the farm. Um, so it was done by farm folk. It's a, this, if you don't know what pissing kit is, it's, um, it's an egg that is decorated, very, very highly decorated egg. It's decorated by hand, generally done by uh, folk women you know, country women, and um, they would at night sit by a candle and make these gorgeous eggs. And it's a very old, it's an old folk art. And um, what I really loved about reading about it way back was that while they were doing it, of course, they had no TV, they had no uh, radio or whatever, maybe they might have had a book or something, but you can't read while you're doing something like that. So they had a whole lot of time to think. And I just, you know, or to maybe to pray. Um, and I just thought that was just so special. Lovely. That uh, it's true. Sometimes when your hands are working, you're, it's good for your, what did my mom used to say? Um, uh, busy hands or idle hands are the devil's plaything. Or then there's the Amish saying, uh, hands to work, hearts to God. I love that. Um, so there you go. Ooh having a little trouble with this glass okay there we go so now we can put this together so here is this and this let's have a look at those two pieces i need more space someone give me more space okay so here are these pieces and we can just kind of uh put some double side tape we don't need a whole lot just enough to sort of keep it in place so tomorrow being saint patrick's day i don't know what you guys are doing i don't ever do anything for saint patrick's day um but i know a lot of people they turn it into like kind of like a drinking day and for me i'm like well i don't think that's why it was it was established um i love the stories about saint patrick and how he used the three leaf clover to explain the trinity that was pretty amazing 
when I heard that story because I guess the clovers were everywhere. And he, when he went there, it was all the old religion. And he was actually trapped on Ireland for quite a while as a young boy. And um, then when he was rescued, he went to seminary and he, um, he learned and then he went back, which is amazing. And um, he went back even though he was a slave when he was there last. It shows commitment, doesn't it? So, um, and they, they even say now, they say, oh, it, he probably didn't, they probably didn't have snakes. So the whole idea of um, him uh, driving out the snakes is sort of kind of just a metaphor. Like maybe he was driving out uh, the bad in Ireland. I don't know. But I got to tell you, like my son has a skills trainer. And he is from Ireland and he has the most gorgeous accent. But the thing that I love about him is that he is such a soft, soft soul. He's very pensive and he thinks about everything. And me, I'm just like, yo, yeah, let's just do this. And, and he's like, well, you know, and I can't do an Irish accent, never could. Um, but he was always like, he's always saying, well, I am, I suppose, even when he's angry, he's so soft spoken and pensive. And I'm like, wow, um, if that's representative of the Irish people, amazing. Just the, the gentleness um, of his soul. So wonderful. Anyway, talking a lot of religion today. I hope I'm not causing people uh, undue anxiety, but... All right, we're almost done here, guys. And we can go ahead and put this in the frame. So um, which do you think you'll do? Do you think you'll do uh, the card or the hanging or um, what? What do you like to see? Oh, you're making soda bread? Oh, yeah, I'm off bread right now, Barb. I wish I could have soda bread. I would love to have corned beef and cabbage meal, though. I was thinking about that last night, but I think we're having chicken tonight. Well, you we don't have to do it every, every year, right? So. There we go. Let's get the frame. What do you think? Um, what do you think? And then I'm just going to put it in here. Don't need to use glue on this. I, I tend to not use glue on these kinds of projects because it's wet. And unless you have it dry, 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 you might get condensation inside. So keep that in mind. All right, here we go. Just pressing these back. And there it is. Isn't that beautiful? Just so lovely. If I say so myself, <laughs> but um, I hope that you like them and let's see. Oh, no offense. Okay. Um, all right. So tomorrow we are going to have a blast. We're going to be doing iron on all kinds of stuff, like things that maybe you had never thought about ironing on, like uh, felt, paper, cardstock, uh, wood, things like that. We're going to see how to do it and we're going to have fun. So if you have a favorite thing that you want to share, make sure that you tell me about it. You can send me an email or you can DM me um, if you want. Like I really always wanted to see if iron on would go on silk. I want to see that too. I wonder if I have any silk around. Anyway, um, get your names in. And we will see you again tomorrow, hopefully. Um, and I will try to share this file. I'm going to do whatever I can to try to share this file for you. Thanks, everybody. Aw, thanks, Babs. All right. Um, we can't go silent. Yes, I agree.
All right, everybody, um, take care of yourselves and each other, and we'll see you again really soon. Take care. Bye.